Good day, everybody. This is uh, Chris. I'm going to go ahead and do your review for the uh, midterm examination. This will be for respiratory physics, uh, spring semester of 2013. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to um, the module schedule that you have uh, down here, and we'll talk about the overview of unit content. Um, so we'll start at uh, the introductory introduction or the introductory material that I covered earlier on. Um, this is in the first lecture. Uh, you'll be responsible for knowing this, uh, a little bit about what physics is. Um, you should be able to identify the three fundamental units of uh, measurement, length, mass, um, and uh, time. You should be able to, uh, to compare and uh, contrast mass and weight, mass versus weight, uh, which one can change, what is weight, what is mass. One's a fundamental property of matter, whereas uh, weight, of course, is... Um, actually uh, related to the gravitational uh, forces between objects of different mass. Um, you should be able to identify what pressure is. It's a force over, over a certain area. Um, what volume is. It's a length cubed. Uh, and be able to identify temperature. And temperature, of course, is the average kinetic um, energy of a, of a collection of matter. And temperature is one of those what we call a macro state variable. Uh, you should be able to compare and contrast speed velocity and acceleration, and this goes uh, back to the uh, vectors uh, versus uh, scalars uh, d discussion that we had. You know, what is a scalar? Scalar is just a number. What is a vector? A vector is something uh, that has not only a magnitude but a direction such as velocity. Velocity is a vector where speed is not, and acceleration is simply the change in velocity, uh, therefore acceleration would axiomatically be a vector as well. Okay. Uh, then we talked a little bit about, in our second lecture, the uh, basics of calculations in the algebraic method, a little bit about linear equations, um, particularly how to solve dimensional analysis. Um, this goes way back even to the first semester when we did dosage calculations and we set up a dimensional analysis and we cross-multiplied and canceled unit out, units out. And, well, what you do to one side of, the, of an equation, you do to the other, and just really this is this is all just a review of the basic algebraic method. Uh, the new material that we covered were uh, measurements and introduction to statistics, and we applied this to um, taking measurements and uncertainty in our ability to measure, and, and how we can take several measurements or several uh, data points and we could do some basic statistics. We could calculate what's known as the arithmetic mean. You should be able to calculate the mean or the, the average, as some people say. Um, we went through calculating the variance of a sample. Uh, I will not have you calculate, actually do a variance, simply because it involves a, a lot of tedious uh, math, which isn't particularly hard. It just takes a lot of time. Um, if you don't have a spreadsheet that, that, can, that you can set up to do that for you. But you will have to be able to calculate a standard deviation from a variance, and the standard deviation is nothing more than the square root of the variance. And you should know that if I'm talking about a normal distribution or a bell curve, that 95% uh, of all your data points should fall within uh, plus or minus two standard deviations from, from the mean. And when things start falling outside of those, uh, that range uh, we uh, have issues and of course we talked about uh, some of the measurement issues that we have particularly with uh, arterial blood gas analysis and um, when it comes to running controls on the machines uh, particularly we talked about in range uh, versus outer range versus uh, shift uh, slash drift and um, other um, issues that come into play there. And then we went to uh, our next lecture about the uh, over the atomic model. We talked a little bit about classical uh, physics. Uh, we talked about Newton's uh, laws of motion. You should know Newton's laws of motion. Uh, you should be particularly aware of the second law of motion, which is the uh, law of inertia. And the, the, mathemat the basic mathematical expression for that is a force equals mass times <laughs> acceleration. Um, and from classical mechanics, of course, classical electrostatics, you should know um, the, grav uh, the law of gravi gravity, which is simply force equals a g gravitational constant multiplied by mass on the first object, multiplied by mass on the second object, divided by the radial distance between the two objects squared. Um, the law of electrostatics takes on the same form. Instead of the gravitational constant, we use the, uh, another constant called K. And we use Q1 times Q2, which is charge, 
on uh, both objects in coulombs divided by the radial distance uh, between them squared. Um, we talked a little bit about the history. We talked about um, <clears throat> in ancient, ancient Greece, um, what, what they did with animals, and you should know a little bit about who did that, and I had mentioned that in the lectures. Um, that a respiratory therapy goes back as far, at least as far as that. Uh, we talked a little bit about, again, Newton's three laws. We did not s do any calculations of calculus, um, only that we talked about calculus and, and, and kind of basically what it means to derive and to integrate, and what calculus is, is really good at dealing with change in physics, of course, is, is essentially the study of how the physical world changes. Uh, Coulomb's law, again, the law of electrostatics. Uh, talked a little bit about Maxwell's equations, simply that they um, are, are a way of showing that light, um, the electricity and magnetism are, are really the same thing, um, just kind of two, two ways of looking at the same phenomena. And then we went into the breakdown of classical physics. Um, around the turn of the century, we talked about the ultraviolet catastrophe and uh, black body radiation. And um, what were some of the relevant points uh, there? And then that brought us into talking a little bit about quantum mechanics. And we said that Max Planck um, was able to solve the ultraviolet catastrophe with his um, equation energy of um, black body radiation equals E8 equals H mu. Um, and then in 1905, Einstein came along and expanded on that and um, explained uh, something known as the photoelectric effect. Um, he actually published uh, three uh, landmark papers in that year, and you should know um, those papers cover the photoelectric effect, Brownian motion, which is particularly important to respiratory therapy, and um, uh, special relativity. Um, the photoelectric effect talked about um, electrons and how um, a certain type of light with a certain energy, a certain wavelength, uh, would cause electrons to leave um, a, a metal. And um, from uh, there, we, we kind of got this view that, that the electrons may be uh, quantized and um, exist in certain energy states within atoms. And they can be excited, uh, they could absorb energy and go up to higher states, and they can release energy in the form of uh, light and, and drop down to lower, lower energy states. Uh, we talked about Bohr's atom, uh, where Bohr basically said, all right, the electrons in the atom have to are confined to certain energy levels and they, they orbit, they circle around the, the atom in very specific levels of energy. And it was very good at explaining um, how, particularly in the hydrogen atom, how um, an electron can absorb light and then release a very discrete <laughs> types of light. Um, unfortunately, Bohr didn't get it quite right and it took somebody called De Broglie um, to look at this and go, hey, what if, um, if light which is a wave can kind of act like a particle when looking at the photoelectric effect, then perhaps electrons or really small bits of matter, um, which are particles, can act like waves. And um, uh, de Broglie uh, came up with a, a, an equation, a, a equation that described the wavelength of very small bits of matter. And then uh, that led to both Heisenberg and Schrodinger. And Heisenberg uh, discovered the uncertainty principle and you know about our our ability to, uh, how certain we can measure position and momentum of something really small and if we know position really well we can't know momentum very well and if we know momentum very well we can't know position very well and then finally uh, went to Schrodinger who um, developed the wave equation that was the H psi equals E psi um, equation we talked about and it is basically can be looked at as an equation of motion for really small objects, quantum mechanical object is is somewhat um, of the F equals ma for very very small things, and it um, had this little uh, had these really weird predictions um, that we're still struggling with today. And then we talked about the new way of looking at the atom, particularly uh, molecular orbital theory, uh, which is quantum mechanical and how it describes special properties of oxygen. And you should know. Um, some of these properties, such as um, unpaired electrons in the uh, diatomic oxygen molecule, the, the blue color that oxygen takes on, and the fact that it is paramagnetic due to the unpaired electrons. Uh, we talked a little bit about medical imaging technology. You should just have a basic understanding of what um, an X-ray um, is, and, and then um, expanded expanding upon X-ray, you have the CT scan, uh, what a PET scan is, and what the basic uh, quantum 
mechanics um, when it comes to the spin of um, hydrogen atoms and um, uh, magnetic resonance imaging. <laughs> and then from there, we went back into classical theory and talked about states of matter, the three fundamental states, uh, liquids, solids, gases, um, and that uh, liquids and solids had uh, experienced significant intermolecular um, forces, whereas gases don't typically, or ideal gases don't. We talked about the the postulates of kinetic molecular theory. You should be familiar with the postulates. And we said that any gas that obeys all the postulates, uh, more or less, uh, is uh, going to be an ideal gas. Uh, we talked about the laws of thermodynamics, the three laws, a little bit about Maxwell's demon, and you actually had to do a video exercise with Maxwell's demon. And we talked a little bit about biological Maxwell's demon, the forms of uh, uh, certain protein channels. Uh, um, we talked about macro versus microstates and how thermodynamics looks more at macrostates um, like uh, temperature, pressure, volume, and that led into a discussion of gas laws. You should be familiar with these laws, the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, Boyle's law, volume and pressure relationship, um, uh, Charles' law, that is, you know, Charles uh, Celsius, um, uh, volume, and uh, Gay-Lussac's law, volume and temperature, Gay-Lussac's law, um, Charles Gay Brother, which is volume and pressure, uh, temperature and pressure, um, the combined gas law, Dalton's law, uh, Dalton's gain of partial pressures, Henry's law of solubility, and Graham's law of effusion. Uh, we then went into our next le lecture on the physical aspects of gas, um, calculating gas density. You should be able to do that. You should know um, the density, uh, you should know the atomic mass of the major gases that we deal with and be able to uh, identify diatomic and monoatomic gases. Um, and uh, we assume that when we calculate density of gas, we will calculate the density at um, standard temperature and pressure conditions where one mole of any ideal gas uh, will have a volume of 22.4 liters. Talked a little bit about heat, humidity, uh, temperature, um, particularly uh, when uh, you bypass the upper airway, some of the devices that we use, uh, passover, heated, uh, wick humidifiers, uh, heat moisture exchangers. Um, we learned that the vapor, normal vapor pressure should be around uh, 47 millimeters of mercury or uh, 44 uh, gram, uh, let's see, 44 milligrams per liter. Um, and we talked about um, absolute versus relative humidity and what the difference is and um, how to calculate the humidity deficit. Um, and we talked about special gas mixtures such as heliox and um, the um, heliox conversion formulas. Um, and then that takes us into our uh, the final lecture before midterm, the fluid dynamics. Uh, we defined what a fluid is and what happens when it's, a fluid is exposed to shear stress. Um, we said that the Navier-Stokes equations are the um, classical equations that are more or less derived from Newton's laws that explain fluids. We call Newtonian fluids. Uh, we didn't actually have to calculate them, just have to know kind of what they are and what they do. Um, we talked about the conservation of energy and basically um, where I can't pull energy out of my butt and how that related to the continuity principle. Um, we talked about the three types of flow, the laminar, transitional turbulent and where those types of flow should exist in our lungs and what happens when I have say turbulent flow in areas of the lung where I shouldn't have turbulent flow. Um, then we talked about how to quantify whether or not I have turbulent flow and that brought us to that, that weird dimensionless, dimensionless number known as the Reynolds number which is um, a ratio of inertial to viscous forces and we said for the sake of a respiratory Reynolds numbers are greater than 2,000 indicate um, uh, indicate turbulent flow. We talked about the Bernoulli's principle, um, which is um, more or less an extrapolation of the continuity principle. And from the Bernoulli principle, um, we talked about the Venturi effect and how we can entrain air. Um, and the Venturi effect is just a special case of the Bernoulli principle where I'm entraining air. We talked about the Kalanda effect. Um, and how uh, fluids have a tendency to uh, attach to nearby surfaces. We did some experiments, um, uh, ping pong balls, water um, on spoon, uh, candle and can, uh, some of those experiments to demonstrate uh, some of these, these effects and principles. Um, we do not worry about high frequency ventilation flow patterns. We will talk a little more about those after uh, midterm. Um, and this, this is actually maybe a, kind of a, a lecture all, all of its own.
Um, then you did the video exercise on Ohm's law and how it applies to fluid dynamics, particularly how Ohm's law and Poisset's law are very similar. Um, we talked about Poisset's law and how that is very uh, quite relevant to uh, flow, the resistance of airflow, particularly in the airways, the IV catheters and, and that. Um, and you should be able to identify things, um, and it's particularly the, uh, the, the diameter, when we deal with the, the diameter the radius and what happens when that decreases and what that does to our flow and how much driving pressure I need to maintain flow. <clears throat> then we talked about Hooke's Law, Elastance, um, Compliance, and Resistance. And uh, we finally ended the lecture with the three major formulas that you have to memorize, and uh, those are the static and dynamic compliance formulas and the airway resistance formula. You should be able to know how to calculate those. Um, do remember with airway resistance, uh, you need to convert your flow, uh, which is generally given in liters per minute. You'll need to calculate to convert that flow into liters per second to get the cr uh, proper values. And we said that compliance is 50 to 100 uh, or 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 liters um, per centimeter water pressure is normal compliance. Lower than that indicates stiff lungs and you should know the pathophysiology of what can cause lo low compliance. Higher than that is very boggy lungs and you should be aware of pathophysiology that can cause that. Um, uh, airway resistance, however, uh, applies more toward the, um, the pipes in the lungs, if you will, the pathways to the alveoli and increased airway resistance and you should be able to identify things that can increase our airway resistance um, and how to treat them. And that is all that we have covered up until midterm and uh, basically the things that I've talked about in the, these last 15, 16 minutes are the things that you should expect to see on your midterm examination. All right guys, take care and thanks for hanging in there.